Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. Time to hashtag everything. We talk about all the fun, crazy stories on social media. From Instagram to Facebook, Twitter to Tumblr, or probably even Friendster. Join us each week as we explore the quirky side of social media. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast. It's simple. It's simple, such a sad song. The one that, the one that we rely on. To get us, to get us. Welcome to the Social Media News Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Ariane, and I'm joined here by the wonderful Heidi. Hello. Our first topic is something that's an update from um, something I spoke about last week, about the Google Walkout, and this is just kind of a follow-up story on that. Um, so just a refresher, last Thursday, um, was it what, October something? <laughs> it was October or something. No, it was November 1st. Oh, you're right. It was November 1st. It was November 1st. Yeah. Right after Halloween. It was. Yes. Yeah. So Google, the employees of Google actually had staged a like international walkout because of some things that came up with the the claims of sexual harassment and how Google handled those cases. So that's why a lot of employees staged the walkout. Mm -hmm. um, since then... The um, chief of chief executive of Google sent out an email, and I don't know if this was just like a mass email or just to like top people of Google so they can pass it on to like their teams or whatever. Mm -hmm. But he sent an email with amendments to the new sexual harassment policy that they have, and this policy basically states that they're going to remove the forced arbitration that they had in place. Um, for any sexual harassment or sexually, um, what's the word? And that kind of area, kind of claims mm -hmm. or cases that come about. And I guess that being said, before it was mandatory, like it just went to arbitration. You had to talk amongst it with a third party. But now they're taking that out and saying, okay, it's optional for you guys to go through arbitration, but we will, you know, do our own investigation without all of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. From that's how I understood it anyway. So they wouldn't have to go talk to like a third party. Right. They could talk to Google. About right. It. Uh -huh. okay. And then Google will do the investigation without oh, having the okay. middle person there. So, yeah. More direct. Yeah, right. exactly. And that's exactly what they were saying. They were like, we're going to keep this direct and more transparent with the company. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. However, this policy does not include temp workers, vendors, or contractors. It is only effective for full-time Google employees. So oh. I don't even think it counts for part-time employees. Probably not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good change, but I feel like Google could do better with this kind of situation. It's a nice start. Yeah, you guys can do better, especially yeah. how big of a company Google is. Right. That's kind of a random, I don't know, maybe it's not that random, but it feels like of the way they're going to address this claim mm -hmm. that they went just like, we're just going to cut out a third party and you can just talk to us as yeah. opposed to being like, we're sorry these things happened exactly. to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which is still tough because working in... It just in the workplace or work kind of world in general, and anytime an employer, this, I mean, this is how I've felt. Anytime an employer is like, oh, our door is always open. You can come talk to us about anything. Every time I've done that and I've, I've had a situation, not specifically like sexual harassment or anything like that, mm -hmm. but if there was a situation I felt like the managers or whoever needed to know about it, I always got like looked at like, why are you bringing this up? It was always like a bad thing. So then it made me not want to even say anything anymore. Like, what's the point? You guys are just going to disregard it, um, sweep it under the rug anyway. So what's the point? You know, so I don't know how much this is going to help them. Yeah, I could actually see that almost being more intimidating like potentially depending on who you're talking to right because like if you don't like your boss or you feel like maybe your manager doesn't like respect you or something right you know then that's gonna be harder to go talk to someone like if yeah. you have, if you work with people who you feel like 
value you, mm-hmm. then I could see this being very beneficial because then you're just going to like hopefully just like cut out the problem. Right. You know, and just solve it right then and there as opposed to having to go through a third party. Mm-hmm. But if you don't really feel respected by who you work for, I could see that being more difficult. Right. Is that saying they can still go to a third party to they work can. it out? Yes, okay. because it's optional. Um, It's not just mandatory. So I like that fact that it's optional because it's like you said, sometimes they are intimidated by their bosses. Right. But some workplaces are like politically based where they have their favorites. And if you're not on like, right. you work there, but your boss doesn't really like you. So it's like, I want to talk to him. He doesn't even like me. Right. You know? Yeah, I could so. see that. Well, I guess that is, they're doing something. Yeah. So that's good. They're not yeah. trying to just like sweep it under the rug anymore. Right. But. Step in the right direction. So good job, Google. Uh, I feel like you could do more still. So yeah, we'll I see agree. what goes on after that. A more positive note <laughs> is about Emma Thompson. Now, I just want to say, <laughs> if you guys don't know who Emma Thompson is, which when I was reading this story, I was like, I've seen her face. I know who you are. W- where have I seen you? She plays Professor Trelawney in the Harry Potter series. Oh, That's yep. how I know her. <laughs> 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 like, she was amazing. I love her. So if you know Harry Potter, you yeah. know who she is. If you don't, I'm sorry. I can't give you another reference on she who is her face is. She's in a lot of movies. She is. Yeah. She's awesome. She's, She's awesome. really good. Um, anyway, she is a two-time Oscar winner, and she just received Damehood at Buckingham Palace last Wednesday. And that is a, I guess in Great Britain, it's like a super huge honor. And um, they were saying, well, the full title is Dame Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire. Ooh, so fancy. It is. super. It's, it's a mouthful, too. Though, yeah. Those in, uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to say all that. Because damehood is the like female equivalent of being knighted. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just want to say that though, though she's, um, she's very socially aware. She's a feminist and open feminist, too. Mm-hmm. And um, a human rights activist. She did... Um, say that she takes this honor wholeheartedly, but um, she was definitely not shy to call out some of the darker foundations of the uh, this empiric honor, mm-hmm. is what she was saying. Mm-hmm. Meaning that even though there's not a, you know, empire, right, a British empire yeah, yeah, anymore, she was like, thank God, because, you know, it, she, <laughs> these are, this is a quote. She said, it was ghastly, colonial, racist, and dreadfully undertaking on every level. But yeah. she does accept, <laughs> yeah, she's not wrong, guys. <laughs> but um, she does take this honor and is as a moral principle, and it means, it still means something to her. And um, so that's why she accepted it. She also didn't, you know, wasn't shy about making, like, finding humor in it. Mm -hmm. So I guess she's been super close with Prince Charles for a long time. They've been, like, uh, correspondence with each other. And so she's known Harry, Prince Harry and Prince William for a very long time. So when she was getting this... um, accepting this honor she asked prince william she was like can i just give you a kiss and he was like no don't do that it wasn't it was it prince harry or prince william i'm so sorry Prince harry it was it was it was was, will it was was prince william oh okay did i it was prince william okay yeah and he she she it was just like a little joke between the two because i think that he knows that she know she's been known the whole family for a while so she said that they both like kind of laughed at it and it was just like jokingly and he even was like his response was a little joking oh no no don't do that because there are other people there receiving the honor as well and he didn't want to make the wrong impression and want her to like make the wrong impression for everybody else to like give him a kiss on the cheek or whatever oh, yeah. he was like no 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 um but i thought that was funny because she was like oh we both got a good laugh about it this is hilarious but she does she does um take this honor very seriously mm-hmm. i you know commend her for getting that because that's huge in right yeah it's their... like a lifetime achievement it is yeah. it is it's the equivalent you know in britain i think wouldn't it be um i feel like well I feel like you could maybe compare it to like a star on the Walk of Fame, but also bigger. Because I know yeah. with like a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, I think you have to pay for it. And then if you're knighted or given damehood, you don't pay for it. No, it's, it's like, like the British years. Empire. Or I mm. guess I use empire loosely. The royal family <laughs> right. will like, they'll basically kind of ask you if you want to be. Yeah. And then they like present it to you. Like, and usually it's after a life of 
you know, yeah, a lot of achievement. And exactly. It's not just actors. No, yeah. And yeah. Yeah, a lot of people can get this. And right. it is through uh, achievements throughout your life. So mm-hmm. I would say it is like a it's, lifetime Yeah, it's like a lifetime. Award. Yeah, it is. You have to pay for that here. Yeah. And um, it's only for British citizens, I believe. Yeah. Or is it? I, don't know. I think you have to be a citizen. It's like here you have to be a citizen for a certain amount of time. Okay. Because yeah. I don't think they would, you know, like it went to Madonna, even though she's lived there for a while. Like right. she would have to be there longer. Okay. Sort of like, so like she is now Dame Emma Thompson. Yes. Like we have Sir Elton John. Yeah. Well, they have Sir Elton John. Yeah, exactly. We can't claim him, but... <laughs> But he's awesome. <laughs> Sir Patrick Stewart. I right, don't know, whatever, exactly. You know, like, but he's an actor. He, they're both, they're, a lot of them are in the entertainment industry. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like that's because they have a good pedestal or. Like a good platform. Platform, there you go, yeah. to um, help. Yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. Because, yeah, Emma Thompson is outspoken. She supports human rights. So I feel oh, like yeah. she has the platform to do so. And mm-hmm. as you were saying, like, as like a lot of people in entertainment have. Right. Right. And yeah, she did receive this honor from Prince William, soon to be um, King William. I put here Prince Harry. I don't know why I did that. (laughs) Sorry, guys. (laughs) But yeah. um, Is William going to be king? Yeah. From what I was hearing off subject, (laughs) from what I was hearing, (laughs) Prince Charles, um, uh, is he the the Prince of Wales right now? Mm -hmm. Or Duke? duke of wells something of wells but he's like super high up there but Uh after um the queen is you know queen elizabeth is done he knows that his life is because he's like in his 70s now i think yeah and yeah he's mentioned um in years before that he would just pass it on to prince william okay so which makes sense because then he can reign a little bit longer and what's the point in going back and forth like oh your dad i mean unless he wanted it but he's done so much which he also said that he likes his position because he can speak out more publicly on um political issues and humanitarian issues as far as if he was king he wouldn't be able to do that because they don't really let them kind of choose sides or speak on certain things like that they have to remain neutral as far as a lot of issues such as okay so that makes sense yeah and he's done a lot in you know humanitarian like Mm -hmm. situations Mm -hmm. and activist ways which is amazing Mm -hmm. so we're going to take a quick break and come back and speak to you guys about more social media, social media, <laughs> sorry, social media topics. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Our next story that we're going to talk about is um, an AI, artificial intelligence, news anchor. is so crazy. So I was reading <laughs> this the other day. Um, this news station in China has introduced an AI anchor named... Um, Heidi, do you know how to pronounce this? I don't. No. I don't speak Chinese. I'm going to try, though. And I'm so sorry if I butcher this man's, this AI anchor's name. Kai Hao? Yeah. Um, I don't We're going to go with that. I mean, it's not like he's going to come after you. I know, right? He's He's not an artificial intelligence person. Exactly. Although that might be scarier. That might mean he has more ability at any time of day. And he doesn't if take holidays. Name, <laughs> if his name is mentioned, he's going to come after me. <laughs> you say so it three scary. times, <laughs> he'll show up. <laughs> the station reported that he will report news tirelessly, in air quotes, mm-hmm. all day, every day from anywhere in the country. Crazy. Hmm. Can he be, is that considered, like, he doesn't get tired. Well, because so, it's... It's yeah. a robot. But I feel like when you say tireless, it's like yeah. you're fighting all the odds. Yeah. But like tirelessly. That wouldn't happen to him. No, it he wouldn't. doesn't feel. Exactly. So. so I'm sorry if anyone out there like really supports AI. Is there is there like an, an AI group for their rights? Like an AI rights group? 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they have unions. So there's no one who can come after me for me to say this. I know. I feel uh, like in the future they might be. I feel like they will. Actually, people will uh, advocate for their rights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, But for now, I I mean, I don't know they could say tirelessly. He's not going to get tired. Right. And yeah, crazy. But um, they had, they debuted him um, sometime last week. I'll get to that. As he was reporting for the first time. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to try and say his name again. It's okay. um, <laughs> but as this AI anchor reported for the first time, he says, not only can I accompany you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, I can be endlessly copied and presented and present at different scenes and bring you the news. Oh, so, okay. So is he like a computer program? Yeah. He's okay. a computer. Pro- so he, he can just be like screened up. Oh, yeah. So wherever like the news is taking place, I don't know if they'll have to have somebody physically there to like record and then he like auto populates. Like, yeah, something like that. Okay, so like they would record something going on and then through your TV when you see the news, he would be he on would, the screen yeah. with whatever is also going on. Exactly. Okay, so they have like designed an image for him mm-hmm. then. Oh yeah, he's he's um built and created after a real person. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it was it was crazy. This I, is the future. The future yeah. is now. It really is. And wow. it's kind of, I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> but this news station s- said that they've also um, presented an English speaking AI. Okay. Um, th- they didn't re- um, let that one really do any news, but they've let in their um, little, when they were debuting this, mm-hmm. they let the Chinese speaking one do the news makes do the broadcasting which makes sense they're in china so right, they yeah. want to be able to you well, know i guess with english speaker they could do international news and everything exactly oh, wow. and i think that's their aim is um to get it you know worldwide mm-hmm. which a lot of you anchors might be out of a job soon just yeah that's you know, crazy i hope you have a backup journalism kind of whatever oh, wow. <laughs> degree <laughs> Good luck. Um, but they were saying that, so the, this anchor was developed from this news station and then they had like some computer genius there helping them build this news anchor. So okay. it wasn't just like some outside source where they were like, we got to figure this out and that person's idea to where they pitched it to this news station. It was the idea within the news station. So they built on that. And um, they said that this AI anchor was developed to simulate the voice, facial movements, and gestures of real life broadcasters. So that's kind of cool because then it's not super robotic. And it's like, you, you've heard like, you know, oh, Siri yeah. or, or like Google when your computer talk- reads to you. Yeah. And it's like, oh, <laughs> uh, why are you talking like that? <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's more humanized. More natural sounding. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So that's crazy. I mean, it makes it, I I think, I feel like it makes it better to watch. Probably. So, that would be annoying to listen to someone who just sounds like, like a, your, a computer voice. Uh, yeah. That'd be strange. Yeah. And the pauses and all that anyway. Um, but they pitched this to mm-hmm. um, a, what is it called? They pitched this day, de- well, this idea during China's World Internet Conference. Mm-hmm. Um, this conference is annual um, in China, and it's meant to be a platform for China's vision of the uh, of the internet and potential for new technology. And we all know, you know, in China and Asia, they are big on technology, which right. is amazing because help us out. <laughs> <laughs> We got slow computers. <laughs> yeah, just come to us, the podcast specifically. Yeah, I got to help us out. <laughs> we could use it, but um, yeah, that's where they pitched the idea and kind of you know, explained, this is what it's going to be. This is where, when we're going to try it, um, stuff like that. So, uh, they also said that they want to expand it to where it, the like AI technology can be in like, there's this popular, um, book reading app and they mentioned it. I think it's called uncle Kai K A I, um, to where it just reads you like specific books, but they said it could be your parents reading the story. Which is kind of creepy because they that's saying like it can imitate your parents reading you a story, but it's it's a robot. Oh, yeah, that's some like trippy sci-fi stuff going on. Yeah, which uh, yeah, it is, and a lot of people. I mean, they're not. Some people are super excited about this. Some people said this this is extremely scary because 
um, as they were mentioning in, or as I mentioned earlier, the China World Internet Conference, somebody who went there said that during, like when you walked in through the doors, I guess it was like a security screening, but they had like facial recognition where it would screen your face and your face would pop up on a screen in front of you as you entered. Oh. Yeah. So that's why they're like, this is kind of scary and kind of creepy, kind of cool. So it's right. kind of like a mix of both right now yeah. over there as far as how they feel about it. This reminds me of a couple different things because this reading about like the potential for this AI technology, it reminds me of in the movie Blade Runner, like the newest Blade Runner with Ryan Gosling. Uh -huh. He has like basically like an AI wife kind of, but yeah. she's not really his, like she's like a program. So I just imagine like. It would be like if Ryan Gosling's character wanted like someone to read him bedtime stories, but yeah. he doesn't have parents, so he has like an AI read him bedtime stories. But then also, I was reading that in China they're doing a test program. I forget what it's called, but basically it's like social points. So like if you do something, they keep point like give you points. Like if you do something good, like you're in a busy street and you let a pedestrian cross, uh -huh. you get points. But then if you do something bad you get points against you uh -huh. kind of and if you end up on like the blacklist essentially like if yeah. you make negative points it makes it difficult for you like you can't borrow money yeah. or like you like even they were saying some like public transit like the really high speed trains won't take you if you have too many negative points right i read about that it's called yeah. negative it's called blacklist crediting or something like yeah, that yeah something like that yeah. And, yeah and they're doing it a test in a few different villages in china and i think they were going to expand it which sucks because here in America, building your credit is hard enough. Right. You know what I mean? So if you can yeah. relate to their situations, of, you know, in yeah. China, it's like, okay, so even though I missed like a car payment and it docks my points, it's like, right. oh gosh. It just that makes was... it harder for you yeah. to like get out of the hole, basically. Oh my gosh. But they don't, they were saying, they were doing that partly because not everyone in China has a credit score and like yeah. not everyone uses banks. So I it's harder say... to like, it's more like personal because it's harder to get financial credit I can recorded see, yeah, i guess yeah i can see the benefit there but i can also see like not so good i would things not there. like that no not i wouldn't all. either nope. i wouldn't either yeah that's strange yeah just fixing your credit here and then would you like say you had to claim bankruptcy in china or whatever i don't even know yeah. if they have that but if they did and then would you have to do some kind of same thing for the social points? Well, I think it would all be connected to your social points so then you would have to to pay it you'd have to pay it back and that would try like to try and bring yourself out of the blacklist yeah but then like they also have your face and everything so i was reading a story where like one guy they had a pic they knew who he was he was on the blacklist mm -hmm. and he was like driving and on, a, on those electronic billboards his face flashed up on the electronic billboard <gasps> As, so that everyone knew that he was on the blacklist. Oh, no. And so That's putting he was everybody like, on blast. Yeah, he was like, I feel like I can't go out anymore. So he only hangs out with people who were also on the blacklist. Oh, that's horrible. Right. That's I don't horrible. want that. No. Now you're just like putting people in social groups that they don't even really want to be in just because they're, you know, on paper or anything else. Right. It's classified as something. Right. Or I feel like it. Like some people were saying it could make them better if like... It used to be, you know, maybe you as a pedestrian couldn't cross a really busy street, but now you can because no one wants to have like points, you know, against them. Yeah. So they'll stop and let you pass. So it's like a social responsibility. But I feel like that's only if you're on the good side. Yeah. If you're already in the positive, then it it's more positive. Mm -hmm. But if you're on and if you're in the bad side, yeah. then it you know it's harder to get out of it. Plus, if you were doing well and you had like positive social points. And then something happens to you financially, I feel like that doesn't help. Right. Then and, then you'll turn. Then you'll be like, oh, I don't like this system. Yeah. And then what if it sees you like get in a car accident, but it's not your fault? Does it still take? I, I mean, have that, no idea. I just see so many problems there. Sorry, no. China, if that's what you guys are getting. Hopefully that thing doesn't go through all the way. Or they do a little bit more testing and kind of make it better for right. everybody. But then you'll have AI coming after you. Gosh, I know. If they're <laughs> already flashing collectors. your blacklisted face everywhere, that's not fun. AI is going to pop up on your computer. Gosh, I know, right? <laughs> you don't get to visit this site because... <laughs> right, yeah, the AI news anchor is telling you only the bad news. I know. <laughs> Gosh, that would suck. <laughs> We're going to take another break and we'll be back to talk about more social media. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. 
Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Back to the GSMC Social Media News Podcast. Our last story we're going to be talking about is, um, it has to do with Facebook, and it's very interesting. Facebook and Elon Musk. Of course. (laughs) So Elon Musk recently, I think it was just earlier this week. Anyway, he offered, I don't know if it was like face-to-face or over a post or anything, but he offered to Mark Zuckerberg to buy every single... um, stock um, every share every of share Facebook. yes every share of facebook from from uh, mark wow. zuckerberg and elon, elon musk is of tesla fame yes he's like the very rich tech guy who like sent his car up into space yeah and wants to is it make a colony on mars he's yeah that he has so many ideas yeah it's, he's making a bunch yeah. of solar panels mm-hmm. he's, he's doing a tunnel in la right now oh for, is he? yeah for um self-driving cars and stuff like that oh yeah of course he's he does a lot of technology stuff mm-hmm. he's super smart very rich <laughs> yes <laughs> so elon musk he and after he made this um this offer to mark zuckerberg which was turned down but he said i've got some <laughs> cash to burn so if zuck wants to make it he calls him zuck of <laughs> sorry i to go back to that he calls <laughs> him he zuck. if zuck wants to make a deal then he knows where to find me <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> this is just coming off of when he went on the podcast and like smoked weed, like on air, yeah. like this is just, <laughs> see now whenever I think of Elon Musk, I think of like all of his technology and advancements. And then I also think of him on that podcast. Yeah. And I'm like, of course he calls him Zuck. Yeah. Of course he would. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, just typical. Uh. <laughs> but, um, he doesn't want to just buy Facebook just to own it, okay? Because Facebook is a very big platform. He wants to buy and control Facebook so he can delete it. <laughs> That's his idea. He's <laughs> like, <laughs> Why does he want to delete Facebook? <laughs> he thinks that this would be better for the human species and further that for like the world. Oh. He just he's like people spend way too much time on social media and Facebook and all this stuff and his like description of how he <laughs> he pitched this idea in a in some kind of word conference. But it was like of the SpaceX rocket, so he he um owns SpaceX and is like two rockets shooting up next to each other and it had like facebook in the middle and then they land like on the moon or some place and one of the spacex rockets like it pops out a delete button and it hits delete <laughs> so that's how he's gonna illustrate what he's yeah, gonna do exactly oh so did he do that at like a meeting or something yeah that's ridiculous yeah some kind of meeting oh conference. my god think about the poor intern that had to design that presentation <laughs> I know. It's like, no facebook <laughs> i mean i guess maybe okay people can hate me maybe it is a good idea to just get rid of facebook and like cleanse ourselves Mm -hmm. but if he gets rid of facebook and i guess instagram too since facebook owns instagram if he gets rid of that there's just going to be another platform there will be you know like you like now that you have it now that Mm -hmm. facebook has made it a thing you can't really delete it forever you can't yeah it's it's just like um myspace when myspace started were you around for myspace yeah i was around for myspace a little bit yeah but um yeah, it just kind of got faded out and Facebook came in like a new kind right. of version. Something else would exactly. just come in. Exactly. 
Exactly. So, I mean, I get where he's coming from when he's just like, oh, people spend way too much time on their phones and social media and not engaging in real life interactions, which makes sense because that's what me and my sister were talking about earlier. I was just like, yeah, how would people react if if social media or anything like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever wasn't there? Right to like even like celebrities what do you think they would do what are you gonna post on whatever now on how like are you an gonna stay wall? yeah i know right, <laughs> right how do you think wall? they would stay relevant which i thought that was i was like that's an interesting question because i don't think people would be able to handle it i do feel like the idea of like because we talked about ai like ai could like take your news anchor job mm -hmm. like i feel like in the future there will be more technologies that will take our jobs and in a idealized world, like in a sci-fi idealized world, that would happen. And then that would just leave humans to have more time to like relax and like do not whatever do they it. wanted, yeah. you know? But I feel like we're not set up for that. So like if you take away like social media, like mm -hmm. people are going to be more competitive for like, like there aren't going to be social media stars anymore. Right. You're not going to yeah. be able to stay relevant via social media. You're going to have to do other things. Right. And that could be more competitive. And like, I feel like technology can allow us to maybe have a little bit more leisure yeah so i wonder if you know it gets taken away like i don't know because it's so weird for me to think like a bunch of people are like sponsored because they post on social media they are and like even if you haven't acted in a while you know like actors yeah, can you still can stay, stay relevant. relevant because of it yeah and like if you get rid of it people are gonna have more competition i guess yeah oh, to of be course. out there of course because i feel like at that point you have to be more creative on how to be you know in the public image right or you so, just get a different job yeah <laughs> you go work at starbucks exactly exactly but i it is more mind challenging to figure out how you would stay more you know in the media's eye right instead yeah. of just on twitter or facebook or right. instagram they would just be I mean? like fewer people in the tabloids yeah. i guess potentially which wouldn't be too bad no i'd be fine with that me too <laughs> me too and i definitely feel like it will lessen the um social media like millionaire area area oh yeah it's just like really you're facebook famous who we cares? just go back to the old ways of bullying people in person Ex right <laughs> <laughs> but then i feel like at that point somebody will be like now i can really hit you right, because exactly. you're not behind the screen <laughs> yeah. so i just thought that was interesting i personally i wouldn't feel too bad if facebook got deleted yeah i mean i doubt elon's gonna be able to buy it but no there's a lot of shit if he keeps Facebook. calling mark zuckerberg zuck, zuck there's no way he's gonna sell it to him <laughs> no of course i don't think mark zuckerberg does a whole lot i mean he has the last say of course because oh, he's yeah. like the founder but right now i don't think that he deals a whole lot he maybe somewhat here and there they i feel like they know his idea oh, they yeah. know his vision they know how to keep it going yeah they're not just gonna let that go no not at all but that is our social media news podcast topics for this episode. Thank you so much for listening. Please join us next time for more social media news. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Social Media Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program <laughs>